What is going on everyone, it's Nier again, and today for you, some Call of Duty Black Ops 2 playing some Hardpoint this time on the map raid using the MSMC submachine gun. And this gameplay is, it's, it, I, I don't know, I don't know about this gameplay because it's very, very old, right? I'm 4th Prestige in this video, I can actually remember this exact gaming session. I was 4th Prestige at the time in this video, and this was on Thanksgiving Day. I remember, I'm playing with subscribers, it was on Thanksgiving morning, and I was just playing with side fall the edge of the map. But I was playing with subscribers on Thanksgiving morning, waiting until like 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon, so I head out to my family's Thanksgiving dinner. That's how old this gameplay is. And I found on my PC, I'm like, have I used this before? And have I not used this? I've talked about it a couple times. Like, I'll have a gameplay on my computer and I'll forget to upload it. Or it'll just get buried and I'll forget it's even there or something like that. I'm wondering if this is one of those games. I don't know. Have you seen it before? Let me know. But uh, welcome to this week's episode of Dear Nero, a weekly series here on my channel where you guys send me in fan questions, fan mail, whatever you want to call it. And I just go ahead and try and give the best answers I can possible. And uh, as of late, you know, Dear Nero is more of a gaming related series and talk about gaming and YouTube and things like that. But I think for this episode, for a change of pace, we're going to answer stuff that's not gaming related. No gaming related questions at all. More different kind of, different, kind of, switch it up a little bit. I think you guys will enjoy it. So the first question, he writes, Dear Nero. So I'm thinking about joining the army, but I don't know if I should or not. For one, I'll be leaving my family and I'll be going to another country. On the other hand, I can help protect our country. What should I do? I don't know. Viper from Pennsylvania. Well, Viper, joining the army is a big deal. That's a huge deal. That's uh, It'll be one of, if not the biggest decision in your life. For a while, at least. You know, there's other decisions down the road, but you know. Uh, that's going to be probably the biggest decision of your young life, and you neglected to leave how old you are. That would have definitely helped me answer this question, but <laughs> regardless, I'm assuming it doesn't matter what age you are. Joining the army is a big deal. It is. Joining any kind of military force is a big deal. Now, you won't necessarily have to leave the country. There's, I looked it up, there's like 190 different specializations within the army, and who knows where that may lead you. But who knows where it could lead you, though. That's the thing. It could, it could lead you, you know, to North Carolina. It could lead you to Iraq, Afghanistan, wherever. I don't know where. It could take you anywhere. You never know what's going to happen when you're in the Army. And, you know, it's decent. It's a decent job. I mean, you make decent money in the Army. I think it's somewhere around $20,000 a year. Maybe you look, give or take $20,000 a year. So you make some money. You know, you definitely have some great life experience. It definitely uh, it helps you get into school. Like, um, they do have all these different programs and stuff to help get you an education after you leave the Army or... Um, it definitely looks great on your resume, definitely sets you up for a future, you know, in regards of what job you're going for, you know, it's that you were in the army for four years or so, that's definitely going to look great, and it's definitely going to put you, you know, head and shoulders above the competition, so that's definitely a good thing, but what you're worried about is leaving your family, which I think that's one of the bigger things as well, well, for me, you know, I, I, I never really gave much consideration to joining the military or joining the armed forces, because I hate traveling. I despise traveling. I, I don't like traveling at all, so I've never even really given it a thought. But for you, I mean, you say you leave the country. I'm not sure if that's hinting towards whether or not you're you know, scared to leave the country or you're scared to travel or whatnot. But I think the biggest thing is you're leaving your family. And that's just it. You know, Not only are you losing your you know, your loved ones for a little bit. I mean, you only get to see them a couple times a year and phone calls and etc. Um, you have that happening, but they lose you as well. You know, they don't get to see you as well. I think if you were to join the army, it sounds like you're very confused right now. And if you, any kind of possible uh, chance of you joining the military right now is in very infantile stages, I think it has to come to a unanimous decision between yourself, your parents, and the rest of your loved ones, because they have to deal with it too. I think it's it's almost bad to say, but like someone that says I'm joining the army and that's that, that's almost like a selfish decision, you know, because your parents, your loved ones, they they lose you for those couple of years, you know. Um, that may sound bad to say, but it's kind of true. I mean, I think if anyone joins the military, I think it should be kind of a decision amongst the family and amongst the loved ones of that person as well, because it's a big choice. It's a big change in everybody's life. So keep that in mind. Um, best of luck to you. That's a tough decision. <laughs> There's not much I can really do with that. Next question. He writes, Dear Nero. In the past, you've said you're a big sports guy. What do you think about all these trades and free agents? I heard the Browns got some new players, and I'm not a Browns fan. <laughs> P.S. Love your videos. Been a sub since 10K. David from Florida. Well, David, the NFL this year is crazy. If you guys been keeping up with it, it's weird. For whatever reason, you got Mike Wallace heading down to Miami. Right? You got Wes Walker heading over to Denver. Right? And the biggest thing for the Browns? Paul Kruger, linebacker from the Ravens. That's, <laughs> that's about it, man. I mean, that, 
Desmond Bryant's the defensive tackle they also picked up. It's not a big deal. I mean, the Browns have this issue. I wanted to make a whole commentary about this, and I could. I'm not sure how many people are sports fans, though. The Cleveland Browns, as well as other teams within the league, there's a lot of them, they're, they're like these lower-tier teams, and they don't realize that their teams don't expect them to win the Super Bowl. You know, I'm a Browns fan. I don't expect them to win the Super Bowl. Jaguar fans, they don't expect them to win the Super Bowl. Raider fans, they don't expect them to win the Super Bowl. They just want them to be watchable. They want them to be entertaining somehow. And us signing some second string tight end from Carolina isn't making them more watchable and more enjoyable to watch. There are so many players out there. James Harrison comes to mind. Dwight Freeney comes to mind. O.C. Uvenura comes to mind. All these big name, I mean, they're older, they're veteran players, but these big name players that could be coming to the team and just make it fun to watch them. No, we're going to take some second, I can't remember his name, some second string tight end from Carolina. We're going to take some defensive tackle from Oakland and a linebacker from the Ravens. That's, you know, had like a DUI issue last year. It's sad. It sucks. <laughs> it's just, uh, I don't know. I mean, of, of course I follow the NFL closely and I think it's a fun thing to, uh, you know, watch and watch how things go down. Of course, I'm still a Browns fan, still watch the Browns games every year, but come on now. Let's sign some good people. Whatever. Next question. He writes, Dear Nero. Hello, my name is Josh, and I am an, um, forgive me if I mispronounce this word, agoraphobic. This means I have a fear of the outside world. This has seriously damaged my social life, and my family has started to resent me. My parents had to get me out of school because the doctors think it's not as big of a deal, and I'm faking it. They refused to get me homeschooled. I just, uh... I'm sorry if I'm reading this wrong. I just feel like my life has been, was great before. I had good grades, a lot of friends, and the best girl ever. I have lost so much. I just need advice. Thank you. Well, Josh, I'm not going to say your channel name, but I did go ahead and check out your channel. And looking at your channel, I cannot decipher whether or not your avatar was actually you or some other picture. But it was a really dark picture, like in the shadows almost. And it seemed to be a white male with very long black hair. And it could have been you, could not have been you, I'm not sure. Uh, your channel background was uh, two, it was like an emo drawing of a, of a man and a woman uh, being hung, holding hands. It's like this goth anime kind of looking thing. And I uh, thought your channel description, you say you love anime and you love Skillet. I think that's how you pronounce the artist's name, Skillet. And I, I'm aware of this artist only for the reason he made this song, If I Wasn't Here Tomorrow or something like that. He's a, he's a rather depressing artist, to be honest. And I'm looking at all this, and you say you have this fear of the outside world. And if you guys know my standpoint on things like this, I don't honestly believe in any kind of mental disorder. I think everybody is a product of their environment. And I feel as though you're putting yourself in a horrible-ass environment, and that's why you're getting these feelings. Right? If you have long black hair and you take pictures in the shadows, you're probably not going to be the happiest of people, you know? If uh, you're, if you're into this whole, um, you know, sad if I wasn't here music, that's not going to help your case. If you're looking for advice, if you're looking to do better in life, if you're looking to just be a happier person in general, you have to make your environment much happier. You say you lost your girlfriend. Plenty of fish in the sea. It's really no big deal. I understand... A lot of people go through this kind of depressive state when they join, when they get into high school. I'm assuming you're probably, you know, early high school, high school, maybe even early college kind of person. Everyone kind of goes through that phase, and it's uh, definitely a, you're a product of your environment in that situation. It's whether or not you're uh, you're going to let that depressive state just kind of overwhelm you, or if you're going to get out of it. Instead of listening to Skillet, whined about how, you know, if he wasn't here tomorrow, how nobody would care, or whatever it is that song's about, then maybe listen to some John Denver. I was talking about on Twitter last night. John, Country Roads by John Denver is a fantastic song. It's a very happy song. Uh, Micah. Love Today by Micah. I think it's, or is it Mika? Yeah, that's a good song. You should listen to that too. Let your hair grow back to its natural color. Stop watching uh, emo anime, you know? I'm not trying to make fun of you. I'm just saying everybody's a product of their environment. It, it, it really is. Um, if you... For example, like on Twitter, um, I've used to follow a bunch of what people consider complainmentators, where all they do is complain and whine and stuff. I unfollow all these people. If you look at it, like they're all normal people, but once they get together and once you know one person starts complaining, then the other people start complaining. It's just how their whole little clique is, and I, I hate all of them. I unfollowed all of them. These are people bigger and smaller than me. I'm like, I'm just why? Why with the negativity? Why with the unhappiness? Life is a blessing. Every day is a blessing. It is. I could tell you a story about how every day is a blessing because I was born nearly mentally retarded and then I turned out to be the way I am now. I could tell you guys a whole story about that, but obviously don't have enough time in this video. Every day is a blessing and you're probably a product of your environment. If you want to be happier, just do things that make you happy. Exercise is actually a really key factor in happiness. I bet you a lot of people didn't know that. 
get outside start watching some happy things you know just I, I definitely think if you give us some time you'll be a lot happier person if you surround yourself with more happy things not everything in the dark and kind of embracing this whole um sad environment it's, it's it doesn't work out that well I'm, i don't know i hope that helps though just please just change your environment i think you'll be a lot happier Next question. Final question. I'm running out of time. He writes, Dear Nero, do you get offended when foreigners call Americans rednecks? From Dom from in Australia. Dom in Australia. It's pretty cool. So I don't at all in any way, shape, or form get offended when uh, people call Americans rednecks. At all. In fact, I love stereotypes. Stereotypes are hilarious. When I think of Southern Americans, I picture a big fat white guy sitting on his porch with a shotgun and like a big... You know, dip a chew between his cheek and gum and he's spitting and <laughs> confederate flag hanging when i picture people from california i picture scarfs and you know skinny jeans and you know things like that my people picture from the uk they eat tea and crumpets all day and you know they are crooked teeth or whatever i picture australians i picture you running around in your backyard with a kangaroo chasing it like it was your pet yeah i think stereotypes are funny i've never been maybe it's because i'm a white american male i mean i maybe i'm biased or i don't have a bias or you know, whatever that would be but I've always found stereotypes hilarious. Like, you look at, like, a Chris Rock thing. Like, Chris Rock, he does a lot of racial humor. And I find, to me, racial humor is hilarious. It's not that I'm racist. It's just, it's funny. Stereotypes are funny to me. It just, every, if you can't laugh at yourself, then you, I hate when people get offended over stuff like that. It's, it's whatever. I, <laughs> that's my answer. But I'm running over the gameplay here. I'm sorry I didn't have enough time to answer these questions. I think that's the reason I should not do actual questions other than gaming questions because they take forever for me to answer. But I hope you guys will enjoy this week's episode of Dear Nero. Please leave, remember to leave a rating where you guys feel the video deserves. And if you like your question featured on next week's episode of Dear Nero, simply send me a personal message here on YouTube with the tagline reading Dear Nero. Hope you guys all enjoyed the video. Hope you guys all have a wonderful day.